But earnings, as we said, guys, is going to be uh, the lead for most of the week, uh, set with Tesla tonight, Jim, and then we move into some of the big fang names as we get into mid midweek, energy names on Friday. What's going to be the, the thing to watch? Look, I think it's going to be Apple. Uh, I think that Apple is a Deutsche Bank note today saying that uh, expectations are low. They announced a 20 percent increase in their uh, the amount of jobs they're going to create. Pretty big numbers. But I, I think that this is the one that holds the key in the sense that it still is the biggest. It's done a tremendous amount of work with Macs, which I think the Mac actually could move the needle. And, David, when I look at it, it has moved substantially. And that's why I think it's important, because a lot of stocks have moved substantially into earnings. And typically, that means sell-off. Right. So does it sell off on good news? That's what I want to know. Uh, okay. So tell me, what are your expectations? I think it doesn't sell off. I think, I think that the cycle I, – we, I speak to too many semiconductor companies, like Skyworks last week, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marvell Technologies. 5G is so strong. It's here. And maybe it's here with uh, T-Mobile. But I, I think that uh, Verizon wants it. I thought that ATT acquitted itself very well. Uh, was not a bad quarter for their right. wireless business. Right. I thought, frankly, Verizon was the weakest of the – Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. Yes, it was. But I think that it can triumph over the negative expectations. There is a theme, Carl, that is uh, very much plays into what Jay Powell is going to talk about if he wants to talk about inflation, which is most of the analysts I follow are saying this is the peak quarter. Now, David Costin, I think, with his excellent note last night, is really talking about peak quarter. If it's peak quarter, why raise rates, Carl? No need. That's uh, that's exactly what the the Fed would probably say, Jim. And, and to quote Costin, uh, he says domestic growth uh, is peaking, and forward equity returns are likely to be modest with a three percent gain in the S and P to our year end target. They're looking for forty three hundred, Jim. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Um, that uh, with peak growth and and peak positioning, some argue that we sort of just churn our way around here for at least the summer. I, I, it's funny. I, I love Costin. I turned, I turned to my wife after I read it. It was like Sunday, and I read the thing. I said, hey, one of my faves is real negative. And, you know, Costin doesn't regard it as being negative. I'm sure he doesn't. But He would never say negative. He would never say no, negative. No, not allowed to say negative. But if you're peak, you, you can't be as bullish. 3% from here is not exactly overly exciting. No. No. No, I think Costin's got to be called out on this. Yeah. He was basically saying, hey, you know what? We're kind of done. Yeah. If that's his target, yeah. then he's sort yeah. of saying that, right? I mean, I finished now, it. And I said, Dave, I'm not going to read you way, anymore. Might be right. So, <laughs> you know, call him out. Not, it's just, it, it, he might very well be right. Who knows? But, but then he had all the you know, charts of all the earnings, Carl, and I thought the earnings looked good. The estimates looked good. But it was a real buzzkill. I mean, Costin joined yeah. that group of people who just said, you know, hey, good to see you. Come back later. And, and I was hoping yeah. he would say, we're going to see earnings. I mean, I was, I was on the phone with Judy, Judy Marks today from Otis. Oh, my. I mean, there's the beginning of the opening of the U.S. 18% orders, 10% organic growth. Carl, when you speak to her, she just, get out of New York. She says, get out of New York. You will see cranes everywhere. Mm. Atlanta, Houston, West Coast. Yep. And I love this. And this is going to just be right in David's face. Mm. David keeps saying there's no business travel. No, I didn't say there's no. I'm questioning whether it's going to come back to the levels that it once had in 2000. All right. So that was that a, is a, a misstatement. No, it's just hyperbole. Yes. But um, one of the things she said was, you ask, do you have, are you vaccinated? Right. And if you're vaccinated, I'll then come see you. That's the dial. Even if the CDC or whatever, there's whole, go you know, the Florida governor, you can't restrict people to do that. But what's amazing is business people, David, if they know that you're vaccinated and I'm vaccinated, well, you know what? We're going to dinner. Right. It's and big. It's big. And you and I are going to go to dinner. Don't you think it's big? Can't wait till Carl can join us. I think it's big. Yeah, it's, it's big. Certainly not in Costin's wheelhouse. No. No, but Carl, I, I, you know, I still think there is a question to be asked in terms of whether business travel and or activity on that level will come back to the levels it once saw in 2019. Perhaps internal travel, that that desire for an executive to go see there, you know, that may be muted for some time as opposed to when you're competing for customers. Yeah. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.